Okay, so let's look at the parts of, what do we want to look at first? Do we want to look at the parts of the hook capsule or do we want to look at the parts of the internal foot? See, in order to rightly grow the parts of this hoof capsule here, we have to know how it should form, fit, and support and stabilize the internal foot. One thing you need to know about the internal foot here, just a minute, is that half of it is bone and the rest of it is fat and cartilage. Okay, I'll show you here. Right up to about just a minute here. Let's take this off. Okay. See there? Right about, well here, let's do it this way. Now one is a front foot and one is a back foot. When I got it on there is a back foot. I'm trying to hold this up here so you can see where the coffin bone ends in the foot. The rest of the foot is all cartilage and fat and can be moved very easily. That is why you want to have a correct understanding of the whole back of the foot and how the hoof capsule should grow from it and support it to keep it in its anatomically correct form. Because when the heels are trimmed out or um, a number of things that can happen, even if you allow the heels to get too long. It can put leverages on the back soft part of this foot that can dis deform and distort it and you wind up with hoof disease and it can even put stresses on the lamina to uh, cause what I call trimming induced mechanical laminitis. Okay, so knowing that this whole part of the foot is very movable. See that? You know, this is drying out, but this is very, very movable, the whole back of the foot. This can be totally bent down and under, like this. Even more so. Right now, this is, um, I have it drying out in salt. So right now, right now, it's a little bit harder than normal. But this part of the foot here, which we call the heel buttress, corium, that the heel buttress right here grows from. Okay, this can be literally pulled down and under the foot as can the frog. See there? All this can be moved. Um, your heels can be contracted and squeezed together like this. Um, they can also get flared and spread apart like this. But um, actually that would be pretty good right there if her, her bulbs were a little wider like that. Okay, so we're going to look at this foot over here. Now, this foot has the skin on it and the hide, and this one I've taken the hide off of. Okay, what we want to see here is these cartilages. Now, this is much as much a part of the foot right here as... Uh, any part that is below what would be the hairline. Your hair would be up here. This would be the hairline. Um, most of the time we just consider from here down to be the foot or the hoof. But actually the whole foot is clear up here and this cartilage is a part of it. Now this cartilage is only about that wide. And uh, in between the cartilage is right here is what you call the digital cushion that goes all the way under the foot and under the frog. Now it's made out of what you call fibro fatty cartilage right there. And how this works is that that these are very flexible. See that? Okay, when the horse runs, steps, walks, okay, what happens is the short the pastern joint here between the two pasterns, um, the long pastern bone and the short pastern bone that connects into uh, the foot inside, um, what it does is it descends down like this and, you know, I'm not strong enough to make do it, but this bone here, right here, would descend way down, almost touching the ground. And when that happens, that, these cartilages spread out. See? See how they can spread? 
like that, they spread out and this descends down onto this fat here to where if you have a frog and a frog stay, you see that frog right there? If you have that, which a lot of horses don't once the heels are trimmed out, this bone will descend down onto this fat which is compressed up and held into place by this frog stay. This bone will descend down, hit that right there, see how it hits that? And then it will spring up. It will help the whole pastern bone spring up because see, look at it, see when I push down? Okay, that is your horse's suspension system, part of it. The other part is the deep digital flexor tendon that runs up here that is under uh, tremendous force, stretching force. Probably not describing that right. But it's like a real taunt rubber band. Okay, and it is constantly pulling it. This, see, now you can see me just move a little bit. You can see that frog just move a little bit. See, now they're always looking at the heels here. You know, uh, here's the thing. What you want to look at, you want to look at this frog stay. If they have a really good frog stay, this descends down into that. This is what gives your horse the spring in his step. And when you over trim the heels, like so many methods of trimming out there teach to do without realizing it, nobody means to do it, it actually strips this out of the foot right here. See? See how thick that thing is there? It strips that out of the foot. And uh, then the horse, it, and so of course this is attached right here to the digital cushion. So as you strip this out of the foot and pull it down, then it just stretches that digital cushion like that. Then you have no firm frog. This is like hard, like, like a nice firm rubber tire, see? And so this is what really helps support the back of the foot is having a nice thick frog with a big thick nice frog stay. Again, that this here, the short pastern and long pastern joint, comes down like this and descends between the collateral cartilages onto the digital cushion here. Okay, it comes down so far it pushes that frog stay and frog onto the ground there and since it's all like rubber it's constantly pushing back so it's constantly supporting this is what gives the horse the spring in his step when you remove that is when you get a horse like we used to say that horse uh, she rides like she has three wooden legs and one stiff one okay why is that because when you don't have this the horse just bottoms out there's nothing to help spring that horse's pastern back up like that. And so that is how uh, the horse, this is what the horse is meant to have. See, now I want you to look at that frog stay right there. Some people call it a frog spine. It's not a frog spine. Okay, um, that is part of its description. But it is technically and literally called a frog stay because it helps everything stay where it's supposed to. It helps the bulbs stay separate. It helps the digital cushion stay compacted and compressed up against the navicular bone underneath the foot and also against the deep digital flexor tendon. Um, and it helps the heels stay apart. See, that's why it's called a stay, S-T-A-Y. Okay, but what happens, again, and I hate to uh, keep repeating myself here, but what happens, again, is that when you trim this heel out, it slowly strips this out of the foot. Okay? All right, we're going to put this back here for right now. Now, that is the correct suspension system of your horse's foot. Now, you have to have from the hairline to the end of the heel about on a normal sized horse you have to have about let's see what I got here I know I got about two inches right there well I got an inch and three quarters on her maybe a little more right to the end of the heel to the end of the hairline 
about an inch and three quarters. And her heels weren't completely restored yet, but she already was getting a very nice frog stay here. I'm gonna let you look in there. Okay, can you see that? That frog stay right there? Once you peel that out of the foot, you by overlaying the heels here, um, then what you have is just the frog corium here with a thin layer of frog over it and this here in the frog corium gets mistaken as what is called the central sulcus. Now when you trim the heels out of the horse um, it also crushes these heels right here. When you trim this heel too low okay, it rolls this whole thing under the foot and it literally strips this frog stay right out of the foot to where you have no sole, no heel buttress, no nothing. Now, I'm going to measure this here, and you're going to see that you're going to have to have at least um, about two inches, one and three quarters to two inches of heel in order to have any sole at all and any frog stay. Now, you notice this, there's no frog in there, right? The frog has been removed. Okay, what happens then? Look what happens. When that horse's pastern descends, what are they doing? They're bottoming out. All they have is digital cushion. They have no frog stay. See, there's supposed to be a frog in there, and this foot was supposed to be up like this. Okay, this, you got a horse walking like this on the bulb. See? Now, That's not how it's supposed to be. You're supposed to have frog stay in there and about an inch of heel under here. Okay, but what we got people doing, uh, and they don't realize it because they don't know the true anatomy of the horse because there's so many uh, errors out there in the teaching of the anatomy of this, this foot and the back of this foot. And so we don't want our horse walking on that. All right, we want our horse walking on this. now. Here's the bulbs that I was just showing you on that other foot. Here's the frog stay right here. Okay, now these bulbs never hit the ground. See there? Okay, 